What is up guys, Derek here from DW Designs and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. Today, we're gonna to be working on this sand car. It's got some structural issues going on. So we're gonna be diving into that in several different series, different videos. I'm not gonna do it all in one video because that becomes too much. We'll go into the details of how to fix it, different ways you guys can fix it, and I'll show you the way I'm gonna fix it. If you guys are new here, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here on the channel to learn about this stuff. If you guys like the video, please do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and hit the like button, hit the bell notifications. It really helps us out in the algorithm. We're really starting to grow our channel and I greatly appreciate it. We just went over a little over 250 subscribers almost now and I'm super excited about that. If you guys dislike the video, Forget you guys. No, I'm just kidding. If you dislike the video, hit the dislike button or leave a comment. But other than that, guys, let's jump into this. Um, first things first, we're gonna go ahead and jack the sand car up off the ground in the front. And we're going to put some jack stands on each side and we're gonna take all the suspension off of it. And the reason for that is, is we need to get all the weight off of the shocks and everything because what's going on structurally here is this tube right here keeps cracking right here. And eventually it's just gonna shear off. So that's what we're gonna be addressing today, as well as a couple other things, but those will be for other videos. So we got the whole entire sand car stripped down to, I like to call it bare bones uh, here in the front end. Um, we're not gonna bother with taking the steering links off or the gearbox or anything like that because there's really no need to do that in this instance. What we're gonna do now is the moment of truth. We're going to get out my dial calipers and we're gonna measure the tube and find out what size the tubing is, which I believe is inch and a half, but I'm not 100% sure. So we're gonna grab some dial calipers real quick and then we're gonna cut a section of the tube off after we figure out what size it is. We're gonna figure out what the wall thickness is. And I personally have a slight suspicion that this uh, tubing is way too thin of wall. Let's go ahead and get my dial calipers out here. We're gonna open up my drawer that's all nice and organized. If you guys are interested in seeing how I make these cutouts, just let me know and I'd be happy to do a cover video on this. So I'm gonna go ahead and dial, grab my dial calipers. They're a little bit difficult to grab out of here, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these bad boys on and we're gonna measure. And sure enough, it's inch and a half. Yes, it's inch and 520 thousandths, 
but that's probably due to the powder coat or paint, whatever's on the surface. So we're gonna go ahead and say that it's an uh, inch and a half. So let's go ahead and cut this off and then see what's in there. What do we need? More power. All right, more power. This is what you need, buddy. Alrighty guys, sorry if you see a difference in uh, video quality or voice quality. What happened was my camera battery died, so it's currently charging, so I had to go to another source. So we went ahead and cut the tube off. It looks like it's like 095 or 090, 090 wall. We'll go ahead and turn the calipers on and so I got 095 there. We're gonna go all the way around 098, 096, 096, 093, 096, 097, 098, 097, 095. Okay, so I'm gonna say it's safe to say that this is 095 wall, which actually goes with my suspicions that it was too thin wall material. So we'll probably bump that up to probably, well, in order to sleeve it, I can't go 120 wall and then have a sleeve in there to go down to 095 currently because our lathe is currently down. So I'm gonna have to probably stick with 095 wall and maybe sleeve the whole entire inside. So that way it's a lot thicker. That's another option that we can go with as well. But this isn't gonna be set in stone because I am going to attempt to do CAD software in simulation so we can simulate what would happen if we use different tubes and put them in different places and whatnot. So that way we know for sure it's gonna hold up and not crack and break again. Because I wanna take you guys a long journey of CAD and all that as well. It's just gonna come down to design and function and form. Yes, we can make things look pretty, but that's secondary. The first thing that has to happen is it has to look, uh, well not look, but it has to be functional. And then we can work on focusing on making it look more the part. Here's several things we gotta account for. There is a lot of force being inputted into here from the shock, which is causing this to want to bend in every time you hit a bump it's gonna take more compression from the spring and put more force on it here, which causes this whole area to want to collapse in on itself. Now this bar here is obviously here to help prevent that from happening, but even then it didn't stop at 100%. We're gonna still have this same setup here, but all this is gonna have to be redone because I'm gonna be cutting it off right about here, just before this tube right here, and then redoing this whole section in here. The reason for that is is because obviously this has already been compromised a bunch. It's been welded on about five times probably and this whole metal section right here is going to be weak because it's gotten too much heat put into it which is not a good thing. So this is why I'm going to be cutting it here instead of just cutting it off like right here and then re-sleeving it in here. With that being said, I'm gonna take a bunch of measurements of this thing and I'm gonna go into CAD and I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to build basically just this section up here of things and then try and simulate the stresses of it coming up right here. It's like trial and error basically to make sure that it's not going to, to break again. The last thing I want to do is trial and error, fix it, and then it breaks and then have to have it take it all down again and then fix it again because we want to make sure we get it done right and did it done right the first time. We got the measurements in, um, my iPad ready to go in the office and start making it in CAD, but I'm going to save that for another episode. So guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.